Hi guys, it's Rez and Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be working on this Christmas gift. It is a glass that I'm going to be using with some Armor Etch glass etching cream and a Cricut stencil that I cut out with my Cricut. Um, so go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and we'll start on this project. Okay guys, so the first thing I'm going to need is a graphic, a design of some kind. For one of these, I'm just going to need some, uh, some words. So over here, this is, this program is Inkscape. It is a free software that you can create SVG files and all kinds of other uh, graphic design stuff. There's a million different uh, tutorials online you can find to show you how to use it. It's really awesome. So basically I just kind of come over here to this little A over here and that will give me my text box. I need to type in what I want my text to say. I need to highlight it if it will let me. And then I want to change my font. So I'm going to go up here to Magic School. Sometimes mine doesn't like to change, so I have to pick something else. And there's Magic School. All right, so now I'm going to go back up here to the Select Arrow. And up here at the very top, you can see... Um, you can select uh, inches, millimeters, usually it's in millimeters, but you can select inches. So I need it to be 2.5 inches. And that has changed it to just under a half inch, which is what I need for this piece here. I have measured this little strip here, and I want to put those words on the inside of that. So the next thing I need to do is now that I have this select so you don't have this selected you just click on it to select it you go up here to where it says path click on path and you hit object to path then you have to go to where it says object click ungroup now you can see that there's each one of these letters is individual then you have to go back to path and select Union. Now that changes your font into an SVG file. So what we can do is we can come down here and we can change the look of it. To change the outline color, you would hit um, Shift. Let's see if I can do this. Hang on just a second. So you hit Shift, hold down Shift and click on your color and that will give you your outline. And then you can hit down here. There's this little X right here. You can click that to get rid of the fill color. And then you have your outline. Now that's my cut SVG and I'm just gonna save it. And then we can go on to sending it to the cr Cricut. Okay, so now I've got my um, Cricut Design Space open. I'm going to go over here to New Project. And then I'm going to go over here to Upload Design. I'm going to select my image, Browse, then I'm going to go to Earwax, Open, and Save. Now then, I can click on that one, the earwax, and then I can insert image. Now I'm going to size this up to my two and a half inch size. That's 
close enough. And then I'm going to hit make it up here. Now then, it is showing me right there that it's on the screen and it's ready to go. So the next thing I need is my uh, light grip um, Cricut mat. And I'm going to place this. This is just some cheap vinyl. Um, it is the Paper Studio. You can buy it uh, at Hobby Lobby for about 99 cents for a 12 by 12 sheet. I use it for just like masking and stuff. Things that I don't really care about or mind if it comes on, you know, comes loose or whatever. So I'm putting this in the one inch to one inch square block over. So then I need to change the position of it here. So I'm going to go up here, I'm going to grab hold of it, and I'm going to move it down into that position. So that's where it's at, and that's where it's going to cut on my Cricut machine. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit continue. And now I need to change the setting on my Cricut because right now it's on custom because I was cutting custom glitter vinyl, iron-on video vinyl. So now I just need to change it to vinyl and place my mat in the Cricut and hit load. And it didn't load. So I need to make sure that it is butted up in there good. There it went. All right, so that is ready. And now the next thing I need to do is hit go. And it will cut that out for me. So now once that's done, we just hit unload and it disengages the mat. And we've got our little, hopefully you can see this. There it is. Alas, earwax. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna have to do is weed that. So we're just gonna pull this off. Set that down on my little mat here. Move that out of the way, and we're going to weed that. Okay, so now we're just going to weed this. Pull up these little pieces. Alright, so that has been weeded, and here's all my little pieces. I'm just going to throw those away. So the next thing we need is a piece of a transfer tape. Okay, so then we just need a little bit of this transfer tape. I, this is just the cheaper um, Paper Studio stuff. I get it 50% uh, off, so it was like $4 for this whole thing. So I just need a piece just big enough. side. Cut this down so I can reuse the rest of this some other time. Now then I'm going to cut this down. Because I need it to be able to fit inside of this area here. Okay. These down just a little. All right. So Alright, 
So, got the transfer tape on there, and then I'm just going to use this little card. This is just an old credit card that I wrapped some thick um, felt around and then taped the top. Works really well. It just slides around. It works really well to rub on your designs. If you don't have something, this works pretty good for burnishing your pieces. So, peel that off. I can peel my backing off. You want to go slow and make sure you don't peel up anything you don't want to take off. Such as those pieces like that. Okay, so got our piece there. We're just going to, uh, we need to clean our piece here. Okay, so we just need a little bit of uh, 91. I, I like to use the 91% uh, rubbing alcohol and a cotton ball. I'm just going to clean this. Make sure it's really good and clean. And there's no fuzz on it. It will pretty much dry instantly. And uh, now we can place our design onto where we want it to be. Just notice there's something on here. Don't need that. Okay. I think I'm going to uh, cut this down just a bit. Just so that it doesn't interfere because this uh, this glass has a lot of curves and angles on it so there that'll make it a little bit easier we're going to start in the center and work our way out carefully making sure that all of the vinyl is sticking down take our little burnishing tool And really make sure that vinyl is down good. Okay, now then we can peel this off. And our stencil is on. Now the next thing I want to do is I'm going to take some painter's tape and I'm going to paint and uh, tape around the edges just to make sure that, you know, if I splash any of the uh, etching cream, then it won't get on the glass and uh, keep the keep the etching where we want it to be. I had gotten a um, a jar that was printed with the phrase "Alas, earwax," and uh, in a um, I can't remember which subscription box, but it was a kind of a Harry Potter themed subscription box, and it was for the bathroom for you to put your Q-tips in. So, I thought this little jar here would make a cute Q-tip. Uh, jar for someone's bathroom for a present 
and I thought I want to try that so I changed the font and you know kind of made it my own and did this for I would never make these and sell them because that's you know their thing this is just for um, since I own one this is just for a gift for someone so I thought this would be fun to do so just a quick wipe there and that one is ready to go so I need to add some I cut this one out yesterday and then decided you know what I'll do a quick video showing everybody how to do that so I'm just going to tape around these same thing I've got to kind of use small strips of tape because this one is curved this way and this way so it's you know no straight lines on this one whatsoever can do this on just about any kind of glass sometimes from what I've heard Pyrex is a little more difficult but I've never actually tried it I used to do this a long time ago this is the first time I've etched something in probably I don't know 10 years <laughs> but I used to do this for Christmas presents and I thought I would make another one just for fun just to have fun with it Okay, so now that I've got my two pieces of glass prepared, I am definitely going to be putting on some gloves because this stuff is really bad. Really, really bad. It's not like resin bad. It's like, you know, eat through your skin and burn your fingers bad. Like, like you can get chemical burns from it and not even realize you got a chemical burn until the next day or a couple of days later. Um, it, it's uh, very dangerous and it's, uh, caustic. You don't want to get it on anything. If you get it on something, you need to rinse it immediately. Um, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of instructions and a lot of warnings on this bottle. So make sure you read everything about it. Give it a good shake. You also want to wear eye protection because, you know, some, it's, it's, it's got a cream consistency, but it can be thinner than you think. And if your paintbrush or whatever that you're applying it with um, flicks any anywhere, you definitely don't want any going into your eyes. So make sure you wear eye protection as well as uh, skin protection. So making sure that this is shaken really well because it does have um, crystals in it that settle. And you definitely want those crystals to be mixed up with the whole solution so that it doesn't cause any kind of blotches on your stuff so all right now then we just got this at Hobby Lobby and it's like the small bottle is about ten dollars it's just a little over ten dollars but then you can use your 40 percent off coupon and get it a lot cheaper so I'm going to use this brush to apply it and then I'll probably use this one to kind of smooth it on so when you're brushing these, you don't want to, see, that's exactly why you need to wear, wear um, protection. You don't want that stuff getting on you. All right. So when we're applying this, we're going to kind of apply it thickly. We don't want to brush it on like paint. We want to, we want to put it on thick enough that you can't actually read your um, your design. You want it to be quite thick. Uh, the thickness will give it that nice even coating. If you try to save it because it's expensive solution and uh, um, just put it on real thin it's not going to work right and it's gonna you're not going to be happy with the results so so you want to just get it on there nice and thick
you know, don't be stingy with it. And I do like to move mine around just a little bit while it's etching. Make sure that all those little crystals kind of do their jobs. So I'll let that one set and now I'm going to do this one. And this is better for small things. Um, like if you, you wouldn't want to use it to frost a whole piece of glass, like for a window or anything, because it's going to be very kind of splotchy and um, uneven. It's more for small projects such as these you can use a stencil where you have small areas that needed to need to be etched so there's that one put a little bit more on this one because it seems a little thin to me And I'm going to give it about three to five minutes. I believe their website says one minute to three, one to three minutes or something like that. But uh, I want to, the, both of these pieces are quite thick. And I want to make sure that they are uh, nicely etched. I don't want it just to be faint lines. So I'll let those set for just another minute. And then we're going to take them into the kitchen and rinse them off.
Okay, so now after you've got that rinsed off and dry them, I just take a little paper towel and dry them off. So the next thing we got to do is take off this vinyl. I'm just going to carefully peel the vinyl away. Looks like the etching cream has done its job. You can see it very clearly. So pretty excited about that. Gonna be cute. A little bit of sticky right there. Earwax. All right, so that's a cool. And then this one, gonna have to peel this one away as well. Looks like it really did a good job on this. It's uh, nicely etched. So again, just gonna peel it slowly. Make sure it gets all of its. Uh, Pieces. It's easier to peel it slowly than it is to pick off small spots. And Pretty happy with how that turned out. So, uh, pretty simple, easy. Um, if you have a Cricut, then this is going to be handy. And if you don't have a Cricut, you can use um, stick-on stencils and stickers. Um, just make sure they are the kind of plastic stickers, not paper stickers, and uh, you can do some of the same results. So that's a lot of fun. So these are going to be sent off as Christmas gifts for a swap, and uh, I think these are going to be really fun. Nice way to have something that's just a little bit nicer um, handmade item than just, uh, uh, you know, Lot of other things. I mean, somebody can reuse this for many, many, many years as opposed to maybe like, you don't know, like a Sharpie, uh, Sharpie paint mug. <laughs> Something like this is actually going to last and washable and no problems there. So, so um, to where to find your glass pieces, you can find a great place to buy glass pieces is at the Dollar Tree. You can get both of these. Well, this one came from the Dollar Tree and then this one I found at a thrift store. Um, it still had its sticker on the bottom. I assume it probably came from the Dollar Tree, but uh, you can get all kinds of different shapes and sizes, of beer mugs and, you know, glass plates and things like that at the Dollar Tree. You can try this on and it will work just fine. So check that out. Um, and uh, if you're looking for the Armor Edge and you don't have a Hobby Lobby near you, I will leave a link to this in the description box below. You can get it on Amazon. And if you buy it through my link, I get a small percentage of the um, spending there. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you all. Um, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!